Hello everyone, I am Marco Martin and I'm Mariam Corcho and, and welcome, welome to Radic Forensics. In today's tutorial, we will go over how to collect dental impressions and what to look for when analyzing them. The materials we will need for this experiment are dental trays that fit your mouth, three measuring cups, one filled with water, multiple toothpicks, wooden sticks, a measuring cup of exactly one tablespoon, multiple napkins, gloves, Cavex and plaster of Paris. What is that? Well, Cavex is a firm yet elastic mixture of alkanite components that allow you to cast dental impressions with excellent details. The best part about this chemical is that it can dry out in the presence of saliva, it tastes like toothpaste, and it's edible, which makes it perfect to cast dental impressions. On the other hand, calcium sulfate, or cat plaster of Paradox, is a well-known chemical made out of calcium sulfate hemihydrate that becomes solid when water is added and allowed to dry. Both the cavix and the plaster of Paris are chemicals that need to be carefully mixed in order to obtain a perfect mixture. Yes, if your cavix is too watery, you are in the risk of it running down your mouth, through your throat, and gagging. And if your plaster of Paris is too watery, it might never harden. And the last thing you need, a victim, I mean, a, a patient. You do never specify which dental infection are we doing. It's yours. Oh, no. Yes. No, 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 no like, I didn't listen, sign up for this. But we no? need your dental no. impressions. No. Like, no. Maria. So in this case, Maria will be taking my dental impressions. Let's begin by making the Cavix solution. You would add three tablespoons of Cavix. and you will use your wooden stick to break down the clumps that the powder forms. Now you will add 70 millimeters of water progressively as you mix the Cavix powder. Keep mixing until you obtain a slimy consistency and all the powder is integrated into the mixture. Now you will add this mixture to your dental tray. Gently spread it like you're adding butter to your toast. Oh please, don't compare this to food. That's nasty. The point is that you will need to make sure that it is evenly distributed and it is not hanging on the back of the tray. So use the clean and wooden stick to remove the excess of the tray. Now, she will insert the, insert the dental tray in my mouth and I will not aggressively bite into it because that could cause uneven results. The best way to introduce this into your patient's mouth is to come in through a diagonal, push down on the cheek, push in and accommodate the upper lid to, to fit the impression. Mm. And you will clean off. <laughs> now I have one minute and 45 seconds of peace while the cavex dries. After about a minute and 45 seconds, the solution should already be dried up. Of course, this can vary depending on the patient's rate of salivation or how much water was added into the mixture. One easy way to check is by grabbing the solution from earlier and seeing if the sides easily pile off. As you can see, they do, which means it is dried up. Now we're going to remove the dental impression. We're going to press down on his lips, put our index finger until it reaches the gum, and firmly press down remove the same diagonal angle angle we put in. 
Once the cast is removed, it is important to dry out the saliva with a paper towel. If there is too much saliva, the tray, the tray could be left to air dry for no more than a minute and a half. Now we are ready to mix the plaster of Paris. This solution calls for equal parts of plaster of Paris and water. However, to increase the details that we could retrieve from the dental impression, we will go over a little bit with the water. We will start by adding three tablespoons of plaster of Paris. Okay. Now he will mix it with the wooden stick to get rid of the clumps. Now you will add equal parts of water and mix. Once we are done integrating the water and the plaster of Paris, he will hit the container against the table to get rid of all the bubbles that are present inside the mixture. Gotta do this this way because we do not have an orbital shaker. Unfortunately. Right after you prepare the mixture, you must apply it to the dental tray. To ensure you get all the details of the impression, we will start by applying a small layer of plaster of Paris. The initial layer will be pushed with the toothpick to ensure it covers all the small details. The rest can be added as you wish. Just ensure that you add sufficient plaster of Paris to create a thick cast that will not easily break apart when it is removed from the cavex later on. Trust us, this has happened already. Set this aside and let it harden at room temperature for no more than 24 hours. After 24 hours, you will risk the cavex shrinking, which will result in the impression breaking apart. What do you think? Uh, we said we were waiting, we have to wait 24 hours. Oh hell no, I don't have time for this. But Twenty-four hours have passed, as you can see. Yeah, we have time to go home, shower, do my homework. Well, the point is that our impression already dried out, and we're ready to separate it from the dental tray. This is a really important part. So before we actually get into separating it, let us explain to you a little bit more about what we will do. To separate the impression, we will start by carefully removing the extra cavus that is hanging on the sides of the impression. Ensure you go with the cutter and remove all the excess that is leaking through these little holes. Now, insert the cutter in between the cavex and the tray to slice it around. After this, your impression should easily come out of the tray. Now that we have the impression ready, we can go into the next step of comparing it to a bite mark. Oh, wait, 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 no. Don't go that fast. Actually, this is a process that does not take place anywhere in the crime lab. For example, if you're getting a bite impression out of a deceased person, that will be the job of the medical examiner at the medical examiner's office. On the other hand, if you're getting a bite impression out of a victim or a suspect, which is the most common example, that will be the job of a forensic nurse. But whatever the case is, there are multiple ways of comparing the dental impression to the bite mark. And even now, with modern advances in technology, they have 3D methods of, for comparison. But for about its economic state, we're gonna stick to the conventional method. Yeah, yeah. For this one, you will need two plates, a clear plastic like this one over here, a dental impression, of course, and a Sharpie. In this scenario, we have two dental impressions. That one that we recently made, 
and another one that was made by another group of students. What we are aiming for is to compare the alignment of the teeth, the mouth sides, and any other distinguished characteristics to be able to determine which one of these two, sus two suspects bit the plane. But remember, it might be possible that neither of them did it. Keeping our minds open to that possibility will decrease the bias in the results we conclude. All right, but before we start, I'm actually gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna go over with this marker to highlight the region where the by mark is. This part is not necessary. We are taking this extra step to ensure that you guys are able to see the bite mark. I just come with a marker in a diagonal position and I pass over this. You can see there how it makes it so much easier to visualize. This is because since it is located in a surface where it is difficult for the camera to pick up all the tiny details, if I go over with the marker, it will be better not only for me to see it, but also for you guys. Now we are ready to begin. To ensure that this process is as accurate as possible, I will place this clear plastic over the bite mark. Before you start tracing the mark, ensure that the clear plastic will not move around. That's why I will place my hand over here. Let me open this so I get a better grip. All right. I will place this hand here and I will use this other hand to go over all these tiny details. I gotta go in with this marker, which is way thinner than the one I previously used because I want to be able to get all the tiny details of the bite mark as you can see them over here. Here I go. Always try to go from left to right. That way you don't smudge over the marks that you're making. And we will leave marks that are identical to the ones that we see on the bite impression. you go. I end up with a perfect overlay of the upper bite. And we can move on into our next step. Now it is just a matter of bringing your dental impression and turning them over to be able to compare the overlay of the bite mark to the dental impression. Let's look at our first suspect. All right, as I am looking at it, the first thing that I noticed is that number one, my overlay is way thinner than the actual bite mark. This bite mark has a very wide mouth. You can see over there, the mouth is very wide. And when I come over with my overlay, I can, I can see that the molars do not match in the place where these molars are located because these are wider. On top of that, let's look at the frontal teeth. The frontal teeth do not align. And that's because, let me put it over here so it will be easier for both of us. That is because, as you can see, this one would align perfectly with this. But in this case, our overlay, our overlay has this one tip that is kind of placed in a diagonal position. And that does not match our bite impression right here because our bite impression, as we can see, it has very straight frontal teeth. Now, I'm gonna move on to suspect number two. Uh, let's see this one. Let me place it. Okay, so as I can see over here, I am getting a good match in the molars. As you can see over here, the points where the molars created a a wider impact match the place where these molars are located. On top of that, we can see how the two frontal teeth kind of align with the, with the overlay that we have over here. We can see this one is a little bit more moved in a diagonal position, and this one, how it does not match the same, they do not follow the same alignment. Because as we can see over here, this, this teeth is trying to step over this one a little bit and that matches what we have on our overlay where the two frontal teeth are not symmetrical 
and the molars match perfectly. So there you have it, just like that. This, this, there is a high possibility that this is your suspect. However, we cannot completely, completely conclude that it was this person for sure. However, I can say for sure that this one wasn't because it was impossible. It was completely impossible. This mouth is way bigger than our overlay. We have a good match here, but that does not mean that this person beat the plate necessarily. Dental impressions are a great way to figure out if something or someone was bitten by a person. But it doesn't always work. As dental care has advanced, people are perfecting their teeth, which it makes it harder to compare dental impressions. However, in the case if a person has a missing tooth or their teeth are cooking in any sort of way, dental impressions are a great way to solve the case. But if you want to check more of that, check out our Brighton True Crime podcast, where we will be posting a soon episode on a crime that was actually solved using dental impressions. As for today, this is all. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! Mm-hmm! Te esperas? ¿Quién está haciendo el ruidito con un plástico, brother? Paula! En 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3. Turn and jump. Traviata, traviata, traviata. Yo no, Ramito. Yo, I love you, eh?